Driving at Home with ABOR's Housing Economist, Claire Losey. Hey, y'all. Welcome to this week's Driving at Home podcast. We hope everyone had a wonderful holiday weekend. This is Danielle Hammett, Deputy Director of Communications at ABOR, filling in for Emily again this week. And I'm Dr. Claire Losey, the Housing Economist at ABOR. All right, Claire, let's get right to it. The big news from last week was the Fed's decision to hold steady on interest rates. How should agents be talking about this news with their clients? That's a great question. So based on the numbers, we know that inflation continued to decelerate last month. In May, headline inflation moderated to 4% year over year and was up 0.1% month over month while core inflation, which strips out the more volatile categories of food and energy, measured 5.3% year-over-year and was up 0.4% month-over-month. So overall, while inflation is moderating, it still remains well above the Federal Reserve's long-term target of 2%. And what this broadly indicates is that we are likely to continue to see a rate hike cycle, i.e. we are probably not done yet. The Federal Reserve is probably not done yet. Hiking rates and we're the Federal Open Market Committee, those participants indicated in their latest summary of economic projections, which was published last week, that they're probably going to raise the federal funds target rate by about another 0.5 percentage points to a range of between 5.5% and 5.75%. Right now, the rate is currently hovering between 5% and 5.25%. So what that broadly indicates is that the mortgage rate will probably tick up again a little bit more once those once that next rate hike comes through, likely in July. And so essentially what agents should be saying to their clients right now or could be saying to their clients right now is, hey, let's take advantage of this window of opportunity. The Fed didn't raise its target rate in their June meeting. You know, mortgage rates have decelerated a little bit. You know, let's try and and take hold of this these next several weeks um, to get, you know, our sale through that kind of idea. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, if you're on the fence about, hey, I think, are you do want to buy a home in the near future, Future, let's definitely take advantage of this pause um, and, and, and get that get that contract underway and work with our lenders and our realtor to, to get a favorable outcome. Right, right. And mortgage rates, they've remained fairly steady, ending last week at an average of about 6.7%. But that is down slightly from a a recent high of about 6.8%. So still elevated, but decelerating a little bit. Um, And we should say, too, though, that it's unlikely that mortgage rates will meaningfully decline until economic activity declines or the Federal Reserve signals sufficient price stability. So we're still in this period of higher mortgage rates. But again, you know, we have this window between now and probably the next Fed meeting in which mortgage rates should continue to moderate somewhat. Got it. So act now. If you're interested in uh, buying a home, make uh, realtors talk to your clients about about getting in, getting into the action and putting in some offers. And what does that mean for Dr. Lissy for the rest of the year? I know we have talked previously about hoping that rates mortgage rates would stay pretty stable or even possibly decline. Where do you think we'll end up at this point at the end of the year? So I think that we're likely to see mortgage rates ease up again slightly in the wake of the next Fed rate hike again, which is probably going to happen um, in their July meeting. And there could even be a second rate hike, perhaps in their September meeting. Anyways, I think over the near term, we're likely to see that some upward pressure on mortgage rates um, after, you know, again, once once the Fed meets again. But we should, I mean, as inflation continues to moderate and the economy slows down a little bit, that should actually put downward pressure on mortgage rates. So it's almost as if we're in this this dichotomy, right? We have this conundrum in which... 
we should be seeing downward pressure on rates as the economy starts to slow, but yet we're seeing upward pressure on rates from these from anticipated continuing rate hikes from the Fed. So it will be a little bit of a factor as to which one will outweigh the other. But overall, we should see rates by the end of 2023, you know, we should see them decelerate. Got it. And a third factor to add to that is that, as we all know, and everyone listening to this podcast knows, Austin is its own animal. And our strong, historically and today, job and population growth often mean that we are more resilient and don't feel the effects of a slowing economy or broader economic changes. Of those trends that you've talked about, Dr. Losey, what do you what do you think will happen in Austin specifically? What should Central Texans be looking for? Well, overall, we our wage growth has outpaced that of the other three major MSAs in Texas, of course, those being Dallas, Houston, and San Antonio. So very robust wage growth, which of course translates into an increase in purchasing power for potential buyers. Overall, as you said, we're very well positioned just given the strength, the robustness of our labor market and broader economy. I think Moving forward, the focus is more so on supply. Of course, we've seen an uptick in months inventory in our May housing stats, which were released last week. We saw about 3.4 months of housing inventory in um, 3.4 months inventory in, in the broader Austin MSA. So, of course, we have a little bit of a more balanced market with within the for sale market but i when i speak of housing supply i'm more so talking to just our ability to accommodate the anticipated demand for for homes in the future so moving forward i think um you know ensuring that our focus is facilitating the new housing supply that we need to accommodate again that anticipated demand from from buyers. Exactly, because just because there is inventory, which 3.4 months for our region, we haven't seen that in over a decade, if not more than that. Um, It's been a really long time. I know at our last Market Shift Conversations event, our president, Ashley Jackson, mentioned that you know, in her 40 years of living in Austin, this is the first time she's ever, or one of the few times that she's ever seen conditions this favorable for buyers in our market. Um, but just because there's inventory available does not mean that it's in the price class. That means a f- it's accessible to a first-time home buyer or even move-up buyers as well. What What are you seeing in terms of price class changes? Absolutely. And that's a great point. So, Broadly speaking, finding a home for less than $200,000 is going to be incredibly difficult. Um, overall, finding a home for you know less than even about $300,000 is going to be pretty difficult. For example, in May of this year, only about, well, even less than 10%, about 8% of homes sold for less than $300,000. And then about one quarter of homes sold for between three hundred and about four hundred thousand dollars. So really, to enter this market, you're looking at a minimum home price of about three hundred thousand. So um, you know, again, speaking to that that need for an affordable range of home options, and just to to mention, you know, with that that minimum home price, it of $300,000. That's equating to a required qualifying income of about $125,000, just given the decline in purchasing power from the rise in mortgage rates. So, you know, buyers need to essentially earn the median family income to even really be able to meaningfully step into the Austin housing market, which is concerning over the long term in the sense that, of course, we want homeownership to be viable to a variety of households across the income distribution. It's the primary mechanism by which households in the U.S. build wealth, especially lower income households. So 
um, again, ensuring that we're facilitating an affordable supply of homes is, is really imperative. Absolutely. 100% could not agree with you more. And guys, just listen, if you're listening in, um, when we talk about Austin and say Austin, in this case, we're talking about the entire five county MSA. So that's $300,000 at a like minimum, minimum entry point into home ownership around the whole region, really. And when you want to talk Austin specifically, or even Round Rock and some some Georgetown surrounding markets, you're talking about a much higher figure, 400,000, 500,000. And as Claire just said, having, you know, just to be able to qualify for that base level is one that is a a six figure income that's very high. And that is um, tough for even families with dual incomes to reach in a lot of cases. So that's why, again, it's just so important for realtors to be talking with their clients, being, say, in close connection, and home buyers and sellers and renter, even renters talking to your agent about what the next best move is for you for a home buying or selling situation. Um, before we dive into weekly stats, I did want to just point out that Claire will be, uh, Dr. Losey will be presenting for the first time um, our buy versus rent index. It's the first time ABOR has ever produced a research report like this. It's going to go, go into so much more detail of what Dr. Losey was just explaining about uh, available inventory versus what's actually available in the market um, from a price class perspective and an, an attainability and accessibility perspective and affordability. So if you haven't registered for our Central Texas Housing Summit, it's on July 26th. You could register at virtually or in person at aboard.com slash housing summit. You definitely want to sign up for that so you can give, be the very first to hear about this research product that Dr. Losey will be presenting. We also confirmed Austin Mayor Kirk Watson last week to join us. He'll be talking about some specific solutions to that data that Claire will be presenting. So you won't want to miss it. We promise. We promise. And before we jump into weekly stats, one last thing. Don't forget, guys, if you don't follow us on social already, you're definitely going to want to do that. So that's Austin Board of Realtors on Facebook and LinkedIn and ABOR underscore Realtors at um, on our LinkedIn and all, I'm sorry, our Instagram. We have too many socials. Our Instagram and our Twitter accounts. Whenever there's a really big decision like this, Dr. Losi is always going to give us a hot take so that you can get that information into to your clients' hands as soon as possible. We share that on our social channels mainly. That's regardless of when these driving at home podcasts are dropping. So please be sure to sign up, follow us for on all of our social accounts so you can get the like the breaking news announcements from Dr. Losey as well. Claire, what are you looking at in the market this week? So we saw a very significant increase in close sales on a week over week basis. And that's largely because as listeners will probably remember, we're still dealing with the lagged effects of the Memorial Day holiday. So on our podcast last week, we were talking about how for the week of June 5th through June 11th, Closed sales were affected by the Memorial Day holiday, i.e. people postponing their closings until after the holiday. So sales were down somewhat last week and have reached you know, more of a nor- more normal level this week, which has led to a very large uptick week over week, a large percentage change. Overall, pending sales are up as well, about 5% in the MSA. So that should translate of course, into more, you know, higher closed sales next week. Um, Broadly speaking, we're seeing, you know, relatively active market, um, especially in Williamson County and, um, you know, and somewhat too in Travis County. But right now, Williamson County is really kind of leading leading the pack with respect to housing um, sales activity and just overall, you know, activity in the residential market. Awesome. And it's typical for sales, pending sales to start to tick up, at least on a month over month basis. When you look at those numbers from a seasonally adjusted standpoint, so taking out of the equation that it's typical for sales to increase in the summer months, do you still see that positive year over year growth? How are we doing compared to to summer's past? Sure. So I think overall, we're still going to see a little bit of moderation in activity, as indicated in our 
May housing stats, we saw a decline in the median sales price of about 15% year over year. And then while close sales ticked up considerably from May, I mean, excuse me, from April, they were still down relative to last May. So we're probably in, and I should say too, since then, we have seen somewhat of an uptick in in pending sales and in closed sales, but it's it's probably not enough to translate into a meaningful year over year increase or really just even a year over year increase at all. Um, so we're going to have probably a little bit of a more temperate, a more moderate um, spring and summer home buying season. However, given the state of the overall economy, you know, given where mortgage rates are. We're faring well, I would say. The Austin region is certainly weathering these broader macroeconomic bumps in the road, so to speak, weathering them well. Got it. So just to recap all of that, um, Austin's holding steady. The housing market's holding steady compared to year over year, month over month so far this year. That normalization is paying off for us and for home buyers, sellers, or sellers and renters in the sense that things are starting to kind of tick up a little bit and move at a healthy pace, not at such a rapid pace that you're, you know, it's a very frantic and frenzied experience for buyers, especially. So that those are all good news, right? Exactly. I would awesome. say so. Awesome. All right. Well, Dr. Losey, what can we be paying attention to? Any big reports dropping that we'll discuss next week? Well, I would say overall, this morning we received the housing starts, permits, and completions numbers for the entire nation. We'll receive those for the Austin Round Rock MSA a little bit later on in the week. But overall, just a very strong month, um, that being May, with respect to housing starts, permits, and completions. Permits were up about 5 per- 5% month over month. And of course, permits are a leading indicator of future housing starts, while housing starts were up 19% month over month. So a lot of groundbreaking on new homes. And then completions were up about 4% month over month, which is just um, indicative of more new supply, new new homes added to to the housing market. So overall, just a very strong month, um, well above consensus expectations. Great. And home, home builder confidence also increased. That ticked up um, pretty significantly. So generally indicating, you know, that, that builders are seeing the market as more favorable. They're wanting to move, um, you know, on, on new construction, again, despite still relatively high mortgage rates. So we're we're kind of seeing indication now that there's somewhat, um, you know, that the buyers essentially have adjusted to these higher rates and that builders, builders believe that buyers have adjusted to the higher rate environment and are reacting accordingly through an increase, you know, through this rise in, in the new home construction market. That is really great to hear about that growing confidence. And you had mentioned those are those are U.S. numbers, right? We'll be That's able correct. to dig into, but we'll know the MSA numbers for next week's Driving at Home, right? That's right. Okay. Well, that's all we have time for today. Um, on behalf of Dr. Losey and myself, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.